Well, today we poured this big garage and we used the trawling machines. Now, a lot of times I don't like to use trawling machines, but if it's a big pour like this, we have to. So I gotta show you how we did it. Well, today we're gonna pour this garage floor. And you can see they have this heating element that we gotta go around. And right here we got stakes where the concrete's got to hit the height. And you got all these things you got to go around. So we're going to get ready right now to pour. Now we're doing a system like this. You see what's going on. They put about two inches of uh, styrofoam underneath it. The plastic. The rebar and then they tie this to the rebar. And when they're putting this system in before they pour the concrete, make a little pressure gauge here to make sure it doesn't lose pressure in those lines. Now there's a different million ways to do this, but we put the line up and we're going to measure four inches down on these pins right here to make sure we're right. Okay, okay. check out for four. That's my grade stake. Four, four inches. inches. Four inches. And we just, just we check all our grade stakes that way. Today we're going to work with a power screed. I'll tell you the truth. In my, since the 1960s, I've never worked with one of these, so this is going to be new to me. And this is my two old power trowels, which my brother gave me this one. And this is one we had since the late 60s, 70s. And this has floats on it. And we're going to use these at the end. I'll show you how we use the dowels. Now, as you can see, we put uh, a height everywhere that we want to, and then we could go off of that. started pouring at 9 o'clock and it's 11 o'clock now uh, so we're just going around the edges everything's flat now I'm gonna talk about this concrete pour this one we did an hour later and this one we did an hour before and yet this one is drying faster than the one that we first pour don't think because a concrete truck comes it's going to give you the exact same mix all the time that's a fallacy I've seen this hundreds of times before. Sometimes when you get a hole in there, you gotta throw a little extra in. Yep. That's it, shake it in. Yep, keep going. We're shaking it into a low spot there. Well, we poured it today 20 yards. We put a retarder in there because it's gonna be a hot day. We don't want it to set up too fast. Same thing we did in the Union. I've been doing that for 30 years. And Jeff and Robert and myself got this in with about an hour and a half. Now it's a waiting game. When I have to get out to get on the pipes, I just get myself a piece of styrofoam. And that's, that's good on your knees and it's a good uh, way to get around your pipes. Get some little trowels like this. Move it out. I'm going around the edges. Just starting to get hard. We make sure, while we can, that we get all of the ridges out. Because we start using a trawling machine. We want it against the, these parts pretty flat here. One of those mazes you have lots of money could afford one of them there high fluting tools. Now it's cold. I'm tired of being on my knee. There you go. This here's the latest style. We 
footwear and cement makers. And did he do it properly? You have to have an edumacation. E D C H M O K E N. Edumacation. That's it. Now, uh, before my brother was a big highfalutin concrete contractor, he was a diesel fitter. Explain that, Jeffrey. Well, I used to work at a woman's shoe store, and I think diesel fitter. <laughs> okay, we got the machine on there. This machine has float blades. These are float blades, and these are finished blades. So we're going to start it up and see if it works. Okay. I did this whole section in here and you can see it. It's like real rough looking. It's like a float and it floats it up and it fills in all the bad spaces. Now this is one of the old machines, but this right here is dial. This turns the blades up or down. So if you, you want to make it real sharp, you turn the blades up, you throttle, and that's it. That's basically all they are. All they are is a trawling machine. This one has flow blades on it. We're going to take these flow blades right out. Okay. talk about that job a little bit. I don't take big jobs like that anymore. I usually just show up and fill in when someone needs me. Now back in the 1980s I was in the Union out in New Jersey and we used to build those big skyscraper type of things and huge warehouses where you'd be pouring concrete there'd be a hundred trucks coming in. There was no power screed. You get 15-20 guys on a big board going like this to get it down and every job you go on, whoever the foreman is, they're going to tell you to do it different. One foreman wants it done this way, the other foreman, that's no good, you got to do it this way. The other foreman goes, no, you don't do it that way, you do it this way. So every time I hear someone write a comment and says, you should be doing concrete this way, I know they don't have that experience. But when you get out there with a big bunch of guys, you just got to be real neutral get the job done because concrete is nothing but liquid rock flatten it out as long as it's flat and it don't crack you're good power trowels those power trowels one my brother gave me I had a couple of the other small ones and I just gave them back to him because I I'm too old to be using them anymore but a lot of them are different anymore they have like float and combined finish blades at the same time but I don't take big jobs like that uh, getting your heights. Back in the 80s, that was the first time I ever seen a laser transit. That was in the later 80s, and they'd go around, they'd put a piece down and they'd mark it, and that'd be your heights. There's a lot of different ways to get heights. Another thing, concrete does not dry at the same time. They could, they could bring it. Every truck's going to dry at a different period. I don't know how they put it in trucks, and I, I, I don't know how they do it, but Every pour I ever did, this section would dry faster than this section. This section is, is was would be poured wetter, and yet that would dry faster. So it's never all the same. Back in the old days, in the 60s and 70s, you call up for concrete, call up and say, 
I want a one, two, three mix. What that meant was I want one sand, or one cement, two sand, and three uh, gravel. Now, sometimes you call up and you say, I, don't, I want a one, three, one mix, which would be one cement, three sand, one gravel. Then they change it all. Now it's 3,000 pounds, 4,500 pounds, 4,000 pounds, whatever. And then you call up and you say, oh, I want pea gravel, or I want regular gravel. Now you gotta say, well, I want 1B or I want 2B. They keep changing all this, all this stuff. It's like at one time you were a garbage man, and now you're a sanitation engineer. They have a lot of different additives in concrete. They put a retarder in that, because it went up to like 90 degrees that day. That one didn't dry as fast as the other piece. Uh, plastic on the shoes. I learned that when I was in the Union. You go out there, everybody would have plastic on their shoes because you don't leave the marks in the shoes. You'd have a flat shoe and you put plastic and you don't stick. I like the old trolley machines because they're real small and real light. Uh, throwing water on it. You know, sometimes concrete takes off so fast like that these big jobs you just got to go around following the guy throwing water on it now I don't when I pour concrete in my area I do little pieces at a time then I got complete control of it so that's the way it is all my videos are the way I've done things the way I do things and it's food for thought so thanks for watching I'm Mike Haddock and that's it for this video